Hey dear venerable sisters and brothers, Tamil friends. Today is our second question and answer session. So I am not going to give any introduction as far as, as we have covered it yesterday. So we are going to start the session with already written questions. And if time permits, we can go for the uh, questions. We can welcome questions from the audience. So we'll ask uh, Lakshmi to present the written question and start the session, please. Thank you, Venerable Sir. There are six questions and at the tail end, one poem. <laughs> I'll start with the questions on sitting meditation. Sitting meditation. Venerable Sir, I noticed in and out breath clearly for a period of time. Then later, it seemed as though the mind has gone unconscious. I don't feel any body sensations, nor do I have any thoughts at this point. Realization dawns when a pain arises at the back of my head and the body tilted forward. Then I straightened myself and get back to the primary object, only to start the cycle again. This has been my experience for a long time. It's a hindrance to my mindfulness because I feel stagnated. Please advise with metta. Mm, the most important sentence is that it is a cyclic. And whenever the second time the breath or primary object appears, as far as the practitioner, practitioner knows this is another cycle, that's a very good uh, mature kind of a statement. And the only thing I would like to clarify is the disappearance or going into the unconscious. Is it happening abruptly or is it happening gradually so that you can be aware? Can the person who wrote the question uh, give some more information, please, to the audience. Bhante, it goes abruptly, I think. Please repeat. It goes abruptly. Oh, it's usually in Vipassana, nothing abrupt. <laughs> Everything is gradual. No accidents in Vipassana world. So therefore, that is the mistake. So you have to understand the appearance or the gross object happens. And then when you are keep on observing, all of a sudden you feel like a slip into an unknown abyss. But if that is happening still, if your mind says it is a drought, if it is telling this is a quick, next time go prepared as to see if this is a discontinuation of mindfulness or uh, gradual development or gradual dwindling off of the primary object. If you go prepared, two benefits. One thing is, when the object is changing from gross to subtle, subtle to subtlest, you will be more and more in, uh, mindful and observant. Therefore, mindfulness can uh, develop. Mindfulness can be more vigilant and diligent as and when the object becomes slowly, slowly disappearing. And the other one is, you will understand your early observation is wrong. So only thing is that your stagnation, your question is because of discontinuation of the mindfulness in the very first phase. It is not a total discontinuation. Uh, next time what you have to do, go diligent, go vigilant. It is called thin slicing of time. How the gross object become medium and subtle and subtlest. That part our mind is not happy to see. Anything arising, mind is very welcome. Anything disappearing, our mind is cheating. So now you have, you got the point. So when you go to the next sitting, do good walking meditation and go there. And when and where are you face to face with the object, well and good. And let your mind or your mindfulness to see what are the changes chronologically happening in this object. And the day you understand, nothing hidden in this world, no mystics, everything is very gradual. Whenever something you say is a drop, it's a mystic. So Buddha asks us to get the mystic 
and put the focus put the torch torch light and see there is nothing unexplainable for that you must have very thin slicing of time and prepared mind and very sharp mindfulness everything is experienced but there is no creator god there is no other powers or uh, which is a maybe lack of mindfulness or lack of preparedness did you get the point or clear yeah yeah can you say by your words what is the point you clarify got clarified uh, my mindfulness is not very alert i am not alert i didn't get the mindfulness has to be sharp and a little more and don't let the mind to say it is a drought yeah. don't let mind to say it is something quick nothing quick in the meditation so you must go prepare no it is gradual i will check event by event how it is happening then only your lethargy will be broken is breaking and then you can see mindfulness is becoming sharper and sharper other variables are now okay only you have to see the changes of the primary object Uh, with respect to time and don't let don't give up mindfulness be be uh, be on the ball be with re- disappearing object and you will see everything will be catalyzed everything will be rejuvenated and you will earn kind of energy the day you see the gradual development okay, thank you mate venerable sir sitting meditation the primary object is the in breath and the out breath i am also aware of the rising and the falling of the abdomen when inhaling i feel an inward coolness in my left nostril i am focused on the primary object for about half an hour though the mind gets distracted i have noted that it comes back naturally without any attempt taken by me so this is not what this is not the what yesterday lakshmi told no this is better person better than lakshmi <laughs> yes <laughs> better be sir could you please advise me as to how i can improve my meditation Therwan Saranai. It is improving. Nothing to do. Repetitive application will give you everything is happening rather than you are volitional, you are personal, you are egotistic. Or basically, whenever the mind go distract, the coming back journey is the most hilarious. It's the most energizing. It's the most catalytic part. Just observe. Don't try to be smart. but you have observed already is enough but it is need repetitive application so that uh, you will be uh, without any doubt with uh, confidence you will see it then you see mind is naturally good you are usually complaining mind is going this say that they all the kind of but if you are to see the coming back it's very obedient it's a, it's a, the very sharply I don't know whether I will take more time. When the Buddha explained about lying, the verbal misdeeds, he says to lie, you must violate four rules. Your natural desire is not to lie. Your nature is not to lie. You are bound to not to lie. Knowing all these things, you are lying. Therefore, we need the high lading, we need the high reaching, we need the high. uh bhava there's another aspect when you are lying you know your naturally mind is not lie you are lying for the political gain economical gain or social gain and whenever you are lying your heart knows so therefore naturally mind is good that's why children they never lie so and if you understand i am a good person of course i became somewhat corrupted because of the association that's exactly karl marx told man is naturally good but he got corrupted then because of the class differences the buddha also says pabhasaram idam bikke vichittam agantuke upakrite upakrita tang asuto to putu jano na pajana the mind is always lustrous but there is a smearing little bit of defilement right round 
but that the commoner do not know therefore it seeing everything is corrupted everything is rusted like but the internal it is ever bright so therefore let the mind to be aware going out also natural thing it is not me not mine not myself don't worry and coming back also natural the day you see you will feel in short you are born enlightened only thing is you don't know so there is a book called born to be free that is our experiment let give a full free chance and see is going out and coming back it's a nature but if you are making stories about going out you will be ever uh, sour in taste and astringent but instead see you coming back ha huh, naturally mind is good so it is happening in a certain level of uh, fixed variables we are you must be in a moral situation you must have a kind of a faith you must have a certain amount of mindfulness and then let the mind to play is going out and coming back so therefore the person do not know maybe ex- expecting a quick accelerated development no it must be very slow it must be very synchronized it must be very natural gradual development always highlight on the way back journey way back home it's a, it's a ever very aesthetic very how do i say very literal literature kind of a literature how the mind find the way back home and see at home it everything is calm and quiet when you back at home So okay we'll go to the third question It's on sitting meditation venerable bhante much merit to you for giving me this, this opportunity to ask this question primary objective is the in and out breathing i sat observed my posture and then proceeded very quickly to observe the in and out breath at the point of contact in the left nostril i noticed that the in breath is sharp and strong and that the out breath is weak and long i continue to observe each in and out breath and noticed its character changing this proceeds some Lighter some lighter. extraneous thoughts lighter than you are you are in a dark place yes yeah. thank you venerable sir some extraneous thoughts come in but as soon as i notice it i bring my attention back to the breath and i labeled the in breath and out breath I feel glad and peaceful and happy. Gradually my focus gets diffused and I begin to feel very lethargic. This became worse and I felt very drowsy. I opened my eyes and started all over again. Again the same thing happened. I also felt a pain in my back. the drowsiness got so bad that i had to stop the meditation and leave the hall the same thing happened yesterday too but this has never happened before please advise thank you venerable bhante may all your spiritual aspirations be realized in this life itself the they are also there's a one sentence telling that when you observing in detail about the primary object it's a shape and the manners you can see kind of changes so it is being well reported so that is the part the yogi must be understand the first and foremost thing is impermanence so when you observe one thing again and again and again at the outset it appear like it is permanent and uh, lovable and good but when you are to observe it it's changing it is evolving it is metamorphosis 
is happening. It's a very nice observation. And together with, I would add, like to add two more points. When and where you see the changing nature of your primary object, and you be invariably observe your distractions also changing. Distraction may be a sound, that's also changing. Distraction may be a thought, it's also changing. Distraction may be a pain, it's also changing. Ultimately, you find no much of difference as far as the changing nature is concerned, whether primary object to others. But individual characteristics, right, they are different. So I have to introduce the individual characteristics and the common characteristics. Individually, pain is different, thought is different, sound is different, rising and falling is different. But everything is impermanent. In that sense, they are the same. Whenever you try to see, whenever you are bound to see the common character, sloth and topper sets in. Because everything is equal. So it's a very advanced level of your meditation. And if you do not know, you are now about observing the common character of the object, then everything will be like flat, that uh, flat taste. They are the point you need the higher boost of mindfulness and see. Earlier, as far as mind is observing the individual character, individual characteristics, it is very energized, diligent and vigilant. But it is naturally leading to common character. Soon the common character sets in the lethargic nature, fearful nature, uncertainty, boredom and get up and go like a feeling happen. The day you understand is the sign. This is the good omen. So can I maintain this situation without changing the posture? Without get up and go? That is the point, your endeavorance. Your boldness should come in, but it is uh, not applicable, not uh, observable by the beginner. It is a fairly advanced state, so therefore the boredom, monotony, is the opposite of desire or craving. So when you, now our our day-to-day -day question is craving. Now meditation is going fast to the not craving side. That is what you call the boredom. That is what you call the monotony, and that is the point where we feel uncomfortable because we are very familiar with craving. Whole journey we went with the journey craving and within a short period, instead of craving, the monotony sets in, boredom sets in, uncertainty sets in, fearfulness sets in, sleepiness sets in. It's a very clear sign. Now we are going against the desire, against the craving, against tanha, against karma tanha. So can we facilitate it? Can we foster? Can we fertilize it? Can we give food and accept this boredom as a clear advanced sign of advancement? Then the boredom will give gladness. It takes a long time, I agree. By the time you get up and go. So therefore one has to go prepared. If the meditation is correct, the individual characteristic will change the natural char common characteristics and it our mind can't read it. But the yogi can read it because boredom happens. Everyone meditating complain about boredom. That's why they are changing teachers. That's why they are changing the primary object. That's why they are changing the meditation centers. And they are not never prepared to see boredom is an endowment of mindfulness. It's a byproduct of mindfulness. It's, it's a clear sign of mindfulness. It's an early sign of higher meditation. So the day you go prepared for this boredom, the whole world you can understand. Because due to boredom only we have hobbies. Due to boredom only we have all dirty habits to break the boredom. So advertisements and international companies, multinational companies come and help us to break the boredom and you plunge into the Neither world. The Buddha says, be prepared, be glad with boredom because your faith never disturbed by boredom if you are well instructed. Your morality precepts will never be broken by boredom. And the day you understand your mindfulness also not 
shaken by boredom that is the time your personality become very strong and we can't expect that in the gross uh, sorry in a large scale we are very happy with our desire our our hobbies our personality traits and we we drag and into this break in the boredom by our hobbies break in the boredom by our this and that liking and disliking and we appreciate this liking and disliking more than nibbana more than the liberation so therefore we fight our with utmost effort to maintain our likings and dislikings our personality traits our karmic forces hobbies and habits and uh, addictions the boredom is the answer so the day you go prepared when the boredom happen understand this is advanced automation so becoming less and less defilements so the day i can put up with boredom you will see your personality is changing your liking and disliking changing your karmic forces changing your hobbies habits and everything now reshuffle so that's the point the evolution the the revolution i would say or radical reflection happens so otherwise you will give give in to boredom and ever you will be writing interview reports yes i have a question back is this boredom known my question is is this boredom known as the middle path boredom known as the middle path not dead boredom you can hate or you can love that is the way people mm-hmm. love many okay. people hate it they get up and go some people love it so the people hate must understand love people love must understand the hate and then later only middle path assimilation happens but it's a clear milestone it's a clear uh, gateway but still you can't say you are thoroughly on the middle path but definitely you are better off when compared to the early situation the big oscillation now oscillation is there but somewhat middle because you are not complaining then on that your whole complaining whole world is boredom that is why people are so much of divorces in the world in a given day more than marriages divorces are applying more than marriages each day due to the money so much of inflation and problems ultimately when you become bored the buddha says only sensuous pleasure is the only thing you can do or sexual pleasure or sensuous pleasure so you have no other way so you become sakam instead of accept act, put up with boredom that's the forest life one meal a day single bed you can get down from the bed from both the sides <laughs> there is a pleasure that pleasure is more than sexual ecstasy that uh, last in the conference ajan brahm directly told that pleasure is more than any sexual pleasure any sensual pleasure but sensuous people sexual people never happy the forest they never happy with the single bed they will never happy with the single meal they want to have association party going and all the kind of thing that's in order to break the border ultimately you see the consequences then it is too late so the day you understand boredom as a as a by product of meditation as a endowment of meditation as a gift of meditation then only i would call that particular person is spiritual till that you are mature you you are learning of course we have to respect them also because it is it is a, it's a huge breakthrough huge uh, turning point on your reflection we will be discussing this more and more in few days to come we'll go over the next question thank you venerable sir the next one is on walking meditation venerable bhante this is my morning's walking meditation experience i started walking with the primary object 
of right and left movement. Then after a short while, I automatically went to lifting, moving and placing. Then after some time, I could notice the wanting to lift, lifting, wanting to move, moving, wanting to place and placing. While walking in this manner, with my eyes wide open, a yellow glow of light was observed on the walking path. This disappeared when I stood still at the end of the walking path and while turning too, I could not notice it. Again, when I was on the walking path, going straight, the yellow glow was this was observed. I tried to observe it while standing and turning. It was not possible. Then I realized that it is not some thing I am doing, but it has to happen naturally. Tirwan Saranai, may you be healthy and achieve your goal in this very life. So if I got the question properly, when you are walking in the path in the middle, you get kind of an alignment or kind of a acceleration or kind of a gathering of the momentum. But when you are turning, your acceleration will be little disturbed and uh, therefore this glorious life and everything disappears. So, this is one kind of exercise or one kind of a homework, I would say. When you are observing this alignment and the glory and kind of thing, you must, if, what will happen if you go prepared to the end, knowing that you are training, changing your posture. It is not one way you walk, now it is turning. When you are turning, mindfulness becomes weaker, concentration becomes weaker, and therefore alignment disturbed. What are the things, how should I maintain, how can I maintain this already earned alignment while turning? It is like uh, when you do relay race, you see the, the 500 meters distributed among four people, one person has to carry the baton and run, maybe with the lead, and pass the baton to the other lap without missing the lead. So, while you are passing the baton, if it is dropped, you lose the game. So, therefore, in the relay race, not like a race, the, the common action, the, the, the group action, and changing the baton from one to the other is called posture junction. Your posture is straight walking, and when you are turning, it's a junction. Usually in the roads, junctions are the place, a lot of accidents are there. When people go in the highway, no problem. But when you have to get exit or come into that, then problem. So likewise, we once we learn walking, a line in the middle, and when you go to the end, that is your homework, how can I maintain already earned alignment while turning? And then one day you will see, not completely lost, but I can earn little bit while I am turning. For example, when you sit, you may gain some kind of alignment. When you get up, everything gone. When you earn something in sitting, walking meditation, when you come and sit, everything gone. Because it is not endeavoring through the posture junctions. The day you understand the posture junctions and try to be there, try to carry this lead, to carry this mindfulness, you will... Uh, be mindful even at your deathbed. Even at your serious disease. Even in the deathbed, it can go through. So when I was in, I was 26 old, I was with Venerable Damiga and he was teaching me mindfulness I have never heard about, 1979. And I told, I have never heard about mindfulness. Why you are praising so much? Uh, I heard about the faith, I heard about the energy, I heard, I heard about the concentration and wisdom. And you are talking something I have never heard. It is well and good. Faith is well and good, but at the death everything gone. 
never remaining. Your energy, next life, nothing. Concentration, nothing. Wisdom, nothing. But mindfulness, whatever you develop, it at least if you are not getting enlightened in this life, it goes to the next life because so credible. So therefore, put your mindfulness a challenge. Can I maintain the same alignment when I am turning? Oh, when I am turning, it is a posture junction. Sitting and from sitting to standing. Standing to sitting. Bending the arm. Stretching the arm. Going forward. Coming backward. Sideways looking. Forward looking. Buddha has given so much of details. Each and everyone must be a, a flower in a garland. The thread must be the mindfulness. It must not be broken. Even the posture is changing. So therefore, otherwise when you are leaving Nisarnavana, you will be so sorry. Because at home you can't do it. But if you understand the posture junctions, wherever you may be, you are mindful. Even while you are riding a bus, or so whatever may be. So that is how mindfulness becomes diverse by this. The explanation indicates that particular person is now mature enough to take this challenge, the mindfulness or alignment you earn in walking, he or she must see the ways and means, how can I maintain it while I am turning? Slow turning. And the day you see the thread unbroken, then you can have a hope from morning get up to the evening sleep, there's a kind of a thread. There's a kind of a continuity of mindfulness. It's very difficult, but even though it has become strong and weak, a continuity can happen. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are schizophrenic. At the time we are in this world, at the time we are not in this world. At the time we are mindful, at the time we are not mindful. So the day you understand how much you are missed the bus, then only you start living in this earth, otherwise you are utterly slavery. Singling can a kambura no agila. I don't know how to put it in English. Such a slavery, you are spending your whole life in order to have the sensual pleasure. No time for meditation, no time for mindfulness, no time for posture junctions. So therefore this is uh, not an uh, advice for the beginner, but when you come up to that level, see how much I am efficient uh, to maintain the mindfulness, to maintain the equilibrium, to maintain the, the condition when I have a little bit of challengeful task. Slowly, slowly you will learn how to do multitasking. Thank you, sir. The next question is also on walking. Venerable sir, the next question is on spiritual life. Uh, the walking meditation question came minutes before we started, one, or one minute before, so I'll leave that for later if you don't mind. Most Venerable Bhante, Yesterday you mentioned that we could ask you three types of questions. One, about our meditation practice. Two, regarding the sermon. And three, regarding our spiritual life. This is on spiritual life. Is the practice of metta in our daily interactions with others included in the third category? I have problems in that. My tendency is to avoid people who may be troublesome rather than stay and practice metta. If it is not included, please clarify what you meant by spiritual life. Thanking you most humbly, Venerable Sir. So the here in this uh, residential retreat, spiritual life means that you are, you are by, abiding by this rep compendium of rules. You sit in the sitting time and you walk in the walking time, eat in the eating time and that is the way your spiritual life. So that no one will disturb, you are spending the time according to the timetable. And even at home, don't assume duties. I would say it is a vested interest 
you bloody fools all the time assume this is my duty this is my duty so you take everything but the other party is suffering so ask someone or if someone need they will come and ask if it is so help don't otherwise walk fingers into the other psychology of course i can do it being a buddhist monk in the forest but i am telling you the my lay life the 27 years even that i never walk fingers into others life that is why i am unmarried i am a registered bachelor <laughs> even if he is a very beautiful girl and next moment i know it is changing nature then it will be a burden so if you feel you better half is the other part i am sorry so let the better have to be better half don't have a hook engage so they are for uh, metta or living with other people completely cut off in this meditation retreat and nothing to interact with other people that is the best thing in your meditation retreat someone is cooking and giving and our sitting cloth is there and our bed is there go, go by the time table and no room because that action is metta itself you comfortably sit and you see i am happy here I am here and now, and that's the best loving kindness to yourself, best well-being to yourself. Otherwise, you never sit symmetrical in the world. You do all the jobs you are doing, not balance. Only in walking meditation you have a chance to do walk meditation because you are not carrying anything. You are have no task. You can walk, and when you are asleep, you can you are both the sides you can get down from the bed. Not in balance. and when you are eating someone is cooking you are eating and the cushion is everything is correct everything is equal sit comfortably otherwise you are always living on other sides you try to pacify others it is it is unachievable task mind your own business be mindful and in the retreat center i would say if you are abiding by company of rules that is what i call spiritual life because you are help not helping disturbing others and you are abiding by rules that is spiritual because we are in a group so it may be different from person to person or office to office but still i would say our nature is reaching out and assuming duties and wasted kind of interest they are creating so much of problem so they are met the necessary if you feel uncomfortable in the body it is like a grease or it is like a, a lubricant just let's apply little and see sit comfortably walk naturally eat when you are eating very naturally and that is the kind of metta then only i would say only then you can radiate metta to someone otherwise metta is just a verbal parrot like why is it not not so bad but the organic part the feeling is not there so therefore if you live by the rules or monastic code and the company of rules that i would say is spiritual life and there we have never mentioned about metta because it is not a verbal metta we are it's a action metta in action see the people unknown people come and serve food what do you feel unknown people put up these buildings and we are making use it unknown people come and sit beds we are sleeping what else and these people those who offered still be very happy because we are using make use it for our spirituality that is the spiritual life i mean i don't know that the person who has written is uh, uh, i feel question is leading to samya but i am telling this is metta this is the spiritual life and enjoy as much as possible and then metta the radiation will start we call in american language it is called good vibes when you are here and now and happy here and now and when we are contented naturally what the radiation going is a, it's a good vibration it's contagious so be happy be here be mindful and mind your own business 
That is what I call metta. So therefore, introducing metta and answering metta is unnecessary if you are following by the basic instructions and the uh, company of rules as a uh, familiarization. We did it. No mention about metta because it is action. It is in action. So therefore, I doubt I, whether I have correctly addressed the question. But that is what I understood. The way I understood the question, this is what. So if we need any further uh, verification or clarification in the statement question. Welcome. Venerable Sir, I'll move on to the next question. Mm. It is on walking meditation. I have practiced walking meditation for about six months. That was something I liked doing on and off. On the first day I came to Mithrigala, I started walking meditation. Frankly, for the first few hours, I was observing the environment trying to get a clear picture of it. I heard monkeys chattering and the banging of doors and the hustle and bustle in the kitchen area. But after, comple but after completion of half an hour's time, no noise was heard. But I was walking. No scattered thoughts or any other disturbance. But to my astonishment, I felt as if I was being taken by a very invisible driving force. But it was not a hard pull or push. Still, I was walking automatically, which I enjoyed. And I felt like walking over and over because there was no left or right or stop or stepping and walking. It was completely involuntary. But I didn't feel the breath touching my nostrils either. Venerable Bhante, I would like to know whether I have mastered the skill of walking meditation to a certain extent. Yesterday's sermon was really wonderful. There was so much clarity in it. But there was a place where I got a little confused. If time permits, please rectify that to me. The person has not said what was confusing, okay? May you achieve your ultimate goals, the blissful stage in this life itself, with the holy triple gems blessings. So this early part of this walking meditation with distractions, because of your distracted mind. When is the mind calm and collected upon the walking meditation, no more distraction from the sound. So therefore sounds are not distracting you, you are the full distracting sounds. When you are calm and quiet, no sounds. When you are distracted, sounds are distracting. So therefore, sounds has no any intention to distract you. But if your mind is not settled, you will get irritated, carried away and taken for a ride by single sound or thought or a pain. But don't believe it. Just keep on practicing. After a while, there may be some different episode. You will be attracted to a particular kind of action or object that is effortlessly happening. Then distractions are no more distractions. So within one person, this can happen. At the early part, it may take 45 minutes. Later, it may be 35, 25, 21, 10 minutes and kind of things. And immediately you feel... You are the one distract, disturbing the sounds, not the sound disturb you. With the, when the sounds are there, walking also there, but you are not worried about the walking, you are worried about the sound. It is a kitchen sound, it is the monkey sound, it is the bang in doors and all the kind of thing. And at that time also walking was there. But later more and more you incline to the walking, they are no more distracting. So, when you at home, how much hustle and bustle in your kitchen? You. Have you ever noticed? 
when you are banging the door have you ever thought that it is distracting and disturbing others no when you calm down even the slightest thing become distracting because your mind is sensitive so therefore definitely you are advancing but you are interpreting it in maybe in a different way so therefore more and more mind become calm and quiet the tiny tiny things just like a peck of dust fall onto your eye it is irritating because eye is a very sensitive thing like as when you go keep on practicing your sensitivity increases of course but don't get distracted instead focus the primary object and when then where you are aligned with the primary object you are cut off from the world or you absorb into that and you can feel everything is automated autopiloting and there you can't see the left leg right leg no lifting low movement low dropping low intention nothing everything is like a cycle like cycling everything is happening in a, in a harmony and you see distractions are no more distractions so therefore you are the person disturbing the world world never disturb you so that because when your mind distracted everything is distracted when the mind calm and collected whole world is calm and collected if you with full of love whole world is a love if you are full of hate everything is hateful when you are meditating world is very green very lively very good when you are not meditating you are arrogant and fighting and rivalry and everything so therefore each and every time you go and see the alignment in meditation you see is even though you attribute to the outside world rather it is a decision inside so early part attribution to outside make your egotistic trip later you find that the egotistic trip is due to ignorance accept everything the things come whatever come and hit or react is your uh, will or your volitional thing so just practice non reaction the day it mind that falls calm and collect you see distractions are no more distractions not that they are not available but they are not tricky they are not irritating because your mind is engaged so it is not the nibbana this kind of half way the buddha is telling as if before the operation if you anesthetize the patient patient is not distract disturbing the, the surgeon imagine if your patient is a tiger if you are going to anal- do operation without anesthesia <laughs> what will happen to the doctor so once anesthetize even a tiger or a elephant or a any person it's not disturbing it's exactly the way my when the mind it got absorbed in particular even the partial absorption to this thing makes so much of difference so if you are to die without understanding that part of your mind i say it's a waste stage the buddha says it is a it is a animal life if you are to human you have to understand even the distractions are there once mind is focused and concentrated distractions are no more distractions so that is the person only can see with both the eyes if you see only the sensuous part it's only one single eye you can't see the depth so they have to have little time and get that kind of a uh, walking meditation and see early part distractions are very gross and very aggressive and very pricky and more and more concentration and they become far away and not that they are not disappearing but your attitude is disappearing that is what you call calm and collected mind or concentrated mind or still mind so familiarize it as much as possible don't complain with the world that we can't comprehend but your your concentration and your discipline concentration restraint something under your control so therefore is i am just interpreting the same uh, let the sounds to be sound mind your own business one day you will see the efficient growth or progress in the meditation or mindfulness then you find that peace of mind is within not outside thank you sir 
then we have a few minutes for the poems for me man sir poem yes um a poem for bhante from the naki pasala sati pasala no swami man sir this is now from the naki pasala naki pasala <laughs> right <laughs> walking meditation i stand erect in my old age at a 90 degree angle something is propelling me forward is it my will that's not me not mine i move from left to right right to left lifting shifting gliding placing left foot right foot ankle arching toes are spreading knees are bending body swaying left to right right to left the mossy mo- wall in front is a vibrant green the sandy ground a shaded gold seeing seeing only monkeys chattering birds chirping hearing hearing only breeze is blowing body is tingling feeling feeling only the sand is rough it hurts my feet feeling feeling only i reach the end of the walking path slowly mindfully silently i turn around the path ahead no traveler on it and so i walk to end my journey in sansara so do sa do sa so when you have this kind of feeling you can't find age you can't find sex you can't find any sectarianism so one day i was in nilambe in 70 80 maybe and uh, i was walking no one at home at the place i am the only person i am waiting just like a king i'm walking and i was felt so much of contentment and then i immediately came a my a thought across my mind but the first day i ever tasted the salt pure salt on the tongue and after 10 years time if you put another grain on your tongue the feeling of salt is it old age now or the same taste even if you taste after 70 years this feeling of the salt on your tongue never get old age it no male feeling of female taste male taste female taste it's the salt it is beyond time so like as you feel feeling 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 hearing 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 bendi 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 there no no male female there is no sati pasala or old age pasala or nagi pasala so we are the people attribute this all the kind of thing ultimately make stories the day you understand feelings are utterly beyond the time and space and you are the one going to give this is a good feeling bad feeling it is my earning it is someone's earning it is a coincidence or it's a constellation bullshit till that you attribute it's me or he or this and that that is way we are learning our the language uh, just like a learning second language one day you will see feelings whether it is for the buddha or to the devadatta or to you exactly the same the way you react is changing so therefore it is uh, the in sati pasala when we had the kavi madu that argument in terms of poem i mention usually naki parada naki parada means old age people are right from the beginning at last the girl, young boys and girls get walk all we the we are we are attributing we give signals we give perception and then fight is always with the perception nothing with the feeling 
We do not know whether I am happening in the male body or female body or old age or young. Feeling is feeling. The day you remove the Visheshana uh, Padeta Pakadigan, adjective, feeling. Just feeling. That feeling do not recognize male, female, so therefore it is naturally poetic. It is naturally aesthetic. It's a naturally top class literature. Imagine when you put it is my feeling, it is big feeling, it's a small feeling, it's a good feeling, it's a bad feeling, spoiling. So when you are reporting exactly what is happening without putting into me, myself and my me, mine or myself, it is spoiling. Whenever you see it is me, mine and myself, so dirty, it's so filthy, so defiled. So we can't go from 100 to 0, 0 to 100. We have to understand slowly, slowly. Don't attribute me, mine and myself or disclaim that kind of thing. Just say it's a feeling. It's a hearing. That is what the Buddha says. Hearing at, stop at the hearing. Don't keep on proliferating. Don't keep on fabricating. Don't keep on storytelling. If you possible, possible, hearing is hearing, stop at hearing. Seeing is seeing, seeing at the seeing. Oh, look at the outside world like a blind. But it's a beautiful poem, no? You good. have to give credit for that, Bhante. And then uh, singing also good. <laughs> anyway, now you have the Naki Pasala response. Yeah. <laughs> so you will be your leader in the Naki Pasala. <laughs> Uh, fence for the paddy cultivation and paddy cultivation and uh, chain cultivation. Uh, was it a comparison to the mind that we have to guard the mind? We should have a protective thing for the mind. That's what I was thinking. That is a, that is a, that is not the pancha nivarana to enter. Not pancha nivarana. Like, this is about sila sik sila uh, that's a physical and verbal restraint. He is considered as a dandu at a, in a vegetable garden. Without that, the plants will be completely destroyed by the predators. So that is the main idea of giving that example. Yes, it is a comparison to the mind. Pardon me? Uh, it is a comparison to the mind. Like, the mind to means the mind. It is a, it's a moral restraint. Yes. Morals. It's a moral restraint. Yes. There are five things. Buddha says, Anugahita, Sila Anugahita, Sutta Anugahita, Sakacha Anugahita, Samata Anugahita, Vipassana Anugahita. Sila Anugahita is given uh, with an example or epithet, just like a fence around the vegetable garden. Your mind must be guarded. Of course, not the mind, but the verbal and physical thing be guarded through precepts or morality. Then only you can be a spiritual person or meditator. So, without that uh, moral restraint, it is just like uh, you are growing outdoor and the, pedis, uh, the pests and the predators will come and eat everything. Right. Thank you so much, Venerable Bhante. It was uh, really uh, so much of clarity and there, that was a little confusion I had. So, you have clarified, rectified it very nicely. Thank you so much. May you attain the blissful stage in this life itself. Hope I think it is enough. That's the end of the question. So we have already taken one now. So we are time up. Uh, on time. And we will take another one hour for walking meditation. And we will be meeting here around 3 o'clock for the group sitting. Thank you very much for the participation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.